What do you want to be when you grow up? Mm, I want to be a singer. I want to be a scientist. What about you? What do you want to be? I want to be a president. In that case, I want to be Vita Secretary. What about you, Cha? What do you want to be? Mm -hmm. I want to be a billionaire. <laughs> That's everyone's dreams. <laughs> Meanwhile, Dul, why are you silent? What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a pilot, but but I haven't prepared anything yet. Ah, if you want to be a pilot, you can try the human gyroscope. Yeah, that's right. Gyroscope is a toy that defies gravity, right? Exactly, but this one is for humans. What is a gyroscope? As I know, a gyroscope is a sensor device used to track the rotation or movement of a device based on motion. In other words, a gyroscope is also known as a device used to maintain the orientation of an angle to remain stable. Basically, a gyroscope will detect the gravitational movement of the user while they are rotating their head or walking. I'm curious about the human gyroscope. Let's watch it! <laughs> Of a gyroscope, first, the gyro sensor must undergo calibration to obtain calibration factor values. The output produced by the gyroscope is in the form of angular velocity of the x axis becoming angle v, the y axis becoming angle delta, and the z axis becoming angle z. Yes, the gyroscope basically only functions properly when there is an accelerator. However, the gyroscope is highly sought after by technology developers today because it is not affected by gravity and can detect from all direction. Huh? What do you mean? I don't understand. Try looking at this spinning top. If the top part spins quickly, the axis of symmetry rotates around the z axis, sweeping out a cone. The top doesn't fall because the center of mass is not directly above the pivot point O. A torque acts on the cone around and axis passing torque O. Oh, so in a gyroscope, the gravitational force in the negative direction produces a torque and the gyroscope in the positive direction around the axis. So the torque due to force equal to R cross mg around an axis O where the torque's direction is perpendicular to the plane formed by R and mg. Yes, Pete. By necessity, the torque vector lies in the horizontal xy plane perpendicular to the angular momentum vector. The total torque and gyroscope angular momentum are related through the external torque sigma axt equal dl per dt or dl equal lf minus li equal torque dt. From the vector triangle formed by vector Li, Lf, and delta L, we see that the theta equal dl per L equal sigma axt torque dt per L equal mgrcm dt per L. By dividing it by dt and using the relationship L equal I omega, we find the rate at which the axis rotates about the vertical axis. So angular speed omega p equal the theta slash dt equal mg rcm slash i omega. The angular speed of omega p is called the precession frequency, which only applies when omega p less than omega. In essence, this model offers us the opportunity to experience how prospective pilots test their physical endurance because this profession requires prime physical condition as they might face multiple times the force of gravity. When the gyroscope rotates counterclockwise, the airplane turns clockwise. The airplane flip because the gyroscope is set to rotation. Therefore, this rotation must be neutralized to stop the rotation. Oh. So, does this gyroscope refer more to what will happen if an airplane were in a tornado? Mm, maybe. Do you want to see tornado? Is there one? Yes. Look at this. This is called a water tornado. This model simulates how a tornado looks. But here, the turbine makes the water spin and forms the water tornado. There wouldn't be a turbine underneath a tornado on air drive. A tornado in a storm occurs due to the meeting of hot and dry air. Meanwhile, a water vortex forms due to the meeting of two opposing currents. There's a fun fact. Tornadoes can be found on every continent except Antarctica. But there are specific areas where tornadoes occur more frequently than elsewhere. Meanwhile, 
Water vortices are commonly found at the bottom of waterfalls. Before understanding the process of tornado formation, we need to know about cumulonimbus clouds. Tornadoes can only form within these clouds. Inside cumulonimbus clouds, there is something called downdraft and updraft, allowing circulation. Dr. T. Theodore Fujita developed a method called Fujita scale to classify the damage level caused by tornadoes. F0 scale with one speeds of 64 and the 116 km per hour has light damage. F1 scale with one speeds of 117 and the 180 km per hour has damage damage. F2 scale with one speeds of 181 and 253 km per hour has severe damage. F3 scale with one speeds of 253 and 331 km per hour has devastating damage. F4 scale with one speeds of 332 and 418 km per hour has incredible damage. F5 scale with wind speeds of 418 until 510 km per hour has catastrophic damage. And F6 scale with wind speeds of exceeding 511 km per hour has unimaginable damage. Here are some of the principles setting that a body submerged in a fluid is buoyed up by a force equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. The relative density of an object compared to the fluid determines whether it sinks or floats. Additionally, there's the principle of angular momentum, rotational force, Coriolis force, and Bernoulli's principle. Regarding rotational force, it means acceleration is a change in a short amount of time, i.e. A equal delta V delta T. When an object rotates around something, the centripetal force to maintain rotation is F equal MA equal MV quadratic R. Acceleration causes the direction of velocity to keep changing to maintain the rotation. The Coriolis force is an inertial force described by French engineer mathematician Gaspard Gustave in 1835 in a rotating frame of reference. It's an inertial force acting to the right of the direction of motion when rotating clockwise. This happens because the Earth rotates eastward and rotates faster tangentially near the equator and slower at the poles. The Coriolis force play a significant role in the spinning of water in a sink or a toilet. The spinning of water is more likely due to the oval shape of the basin or the off-center drain. On a large scale, in storm and hurricanes, the Coriolis force causes the air to rotate around the center in a cyclonic direction counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere and clockwise in the southern hemisphere. Yes, Bernoulli principle derived from the conservation of energy relates altitude, pressure, and the speed of a fluid or gas without elevation change. Fast moving fluid has lower pressure. This pressure different can leave the roof of a house, causing it to be blow away. Reminds me of the movie Frozen. That's all from us. Thanks for watching. <laughs>